right, guys. Let's get started here. We're going to start with a number six B10S. Love those hooks. can't really see it but on this barb itself there's a little ridge and it's not quite on the top of the the bottom of the flank and it's not really on the side it's kind of at a 45 angle off of the top and whenever you come in and you grab it right see how flat it lays and you don't have to work with getting your flank straight because it's riding that natural groove that's already in your flank that wants to work for you. Just make sure that you have them inside. It doesn't work as well if you splay them. And you just, it's the first wrap, right? You have to get, if the first wrap comes out right, then they're perfect. Okay, now we're just going to fill in some body material. <clears throat> Also give it a little bit of color. This is the sexy shad color. One of my favorite bass and striper colors. We're gonna finish off the back hook here. There's not much to it. We're just gonna put a little marabou. I'm just going to palmer just a little bit. Don't overstack it. The lighter the back end is, the better it's going to follow. You don't want to stack a bunch of materials onto that back hook. It's just a tail. It doesn't have to have a big profile. So as you're going into these, you know, just keep the mind process, the thought process that less is more. Think of it like you think of your leaders. A small, a heavy line throws a small line, right? So if that thing follows in the back and it's that much lighter, then it just tends to follow that much better. There's a nice little chartreuse minnow. <laughs> so I always go in and give myself a, a thread base uh, to glue to so that this back hook doesn't come out. But don't get too far to your forward because remember, you're gonna spin a little deer hair head up there so you want that bare shank in the front. And now we're just gonna come in with any kind of mono, right? Uh, 40 pound mono. So what I like to do is I come to the side that way this loop continues to be up and down so that the back end of the fly doesn't try to spin and canter on you and then it just it just follows better in line with that hook so i come down and i grab both lines on this side and then i make my adjustment for how long i want it to be And then we're just going to come in here with a little more marabou just to cover this, kind of cover our junction here. That's plenty. I don't want to overdo it anywhere on this fly. There's nowhere on this fly that you should be stacking lots of material. 
keep this fly light and fun to throw. This fly can be thrown on a six weight very easily. This fly has very, very little material, guys. guys time to do fun part don't worry guys this isn't one of those flies if you can't spin a deer hair head try it anyway it's going to work out for you this is the best tool it's a dubbing tool but i use it for getting all of the under fur out of this it's great for using craft fur to get all the underbody out of it and what we're going to do to make this simple for everybody is we're not going to spin it right we're just going to push this up on here. We just need the buoyancy of it. And the fly is so small and so light that you don't have to have tons of buoyancy. So it's going to be two wraps and pull tight. Let's see, so it's going to be two wraps and pull tight. Make a couple more wraps. Fluff everything up. Pull your craft fur, I mean your marabou back. Go through it a little funny a couple of times and then just pull it all back. And then don't worry about how tight you stack it. Just pull this line right in front of that stack and just get it set. And we're going to do it one more time. And I want you to get a sizable chunk of, of deer hair when you get this because we're going we're gonna to trim the bulk of it out. The fly, everything else, we palmered or spun, so it's going to have a tendency with these lighter hooks to want to spin on you in the water column. And so the way we're going to stop that is by taking all of the buoyancy off of the bottom by trimming it flat. Until you can see the green of the marabou underneath it. Remember, this is for buoyancy. I don't mind leaving these hackles up. They could help hold up that front material, but we're gonna take all this off the nose here. And just hold your scissors at like a 45 degree angle and just turn the fly and go all the way around it. What you gotta remember is it doesn't matter if this is trimmed pretty. Don't be afraid to get in there. And I'm gonna come in super tight here. come back in here guys we're gonna start our thread 
right back on that nose you got very little room you don't need much room We don't need much of this either. It's a very small fly. Okay. Okay, guys, look. This is one of the reasons I like this tool so much. Anybody that works with craft fire knows how easy that was, right? And we're just going to come back. And where I want to come with this is I want to come back to the back of the blue on the back hook. When you cut it there, I want you to give yourself an extra quarter of an inch because we're reverse tying it. Now, I want you to come in. I want you to push this just straight over the head. like this grab it with your finger with the other fingers make a couple of loose wraps and then pull into the nose of that hook now we've got that bound and I want you to wrap back towards the back of the hook just a little All right now I found that I, I like to come in and trim these out. It makes it stand up a little too funny if you leave those little tag ends in there too long. Alright. And then you just begin to spread and split evenly. There you got it on all sides of the fly. Yes. And then what I like to do is see how this can be really just wants to kind of stick out. There's a good way to tame that. Take this bug and turn him upside down and get all the hair even where you want. If you put too much right here, it'll bleed down into it and it, you won't like it. But if you put just the right amount, uh, just a drop right on the head and you hold it in kind of a cone shape in your fingers and just barely touch it to it, you know, just, to, just enough to say there's a little bit on there. That glue will tame that head, and you won't have to fight the hair quite as much. See how naturally now it wants to stay back? And so that's why you do that last little part. See how it doesn't even want to fall forward anymore. Mm -hmm.